Hello and welcome to part two of episode 76 of the Ziawu Studio Bus podcast. My name is Doc and I am coming to you from the beautiful desert of New Mexico. I need to thank you first for the kind and um, thoughtful and uh, sweet responses to the last episode where I talked about the loss of my mother. Thank you for that. That meant a lot. Thank you. Today, as I promised before, I want to talk about what I have finished since episode 75 and what I am working on and also about a few decisions that I need to make uh, before I can cast on something new. After, um, after the loss of mom, I went into this weird mode of yeah, I did not. Of course, I did not not w want to knit, but I, you know, mom was an avid sock knitter, so, and she was totally monogamous, always. And so I really, um, I felt like, hey, I need to do something in her memory or I said at times I said I'm gonna channel my inner Gerda and I'm gonna knit monogamous I'm gonna finish things and especially I wanted to finish socks and since she knitted so many socks I have finished mine and I haven't started to any kind of normal socks ever since except for the ones that I showed you in the, in part one of this, the super fast and super thick house socks. But let me show you what I finished. All the socks that I had started a long time ago, most of them have been finished. And I didn't even bring the sock blockers because they're all vanilla socks and you all know how they look like and I'm just really happy that I'm, I finished them. Here's a uh, very special pair. Vicky, you're not gonna believe it. The yarn was a half a skein gifted to me by uh, Vicky um, from Canada and it took me this long to finish the socks. I'm sorry, she's been long, long done with her pair friendship socks. And um, I decided to do two different colored uh, ribbings and now I'm ready for fall. Next pair, all of the rest are Christmas socks. This was also a gift, a Christmas, a hand dyed skein of Christmas yarn by a German dyer. Zia Wool's Sandia, some of you may remember this colorway, the little girl's gingerbread house, a super bright one. And another Zia Wool's yarn Christmas colorway, the Beekeeper's Christmas on my Tao space. The other one was Sandia, and this is the Coriadale uh, nylon blend, which I love so much because it gets this nice halo once it's washed, even though these haven't been washed. I don't wash my socks, I just wear them. Those were the socks and I am glad I'm done with them. So that was kind of like a good, good um, thing to do in these first days and weeks. And um, another thing that I had finished was a shawl that I had shown you that I was knitting in Zia Wool's Honeysuckle in a very bright co yellow colorway. 
and then I had told you that um, I ran out of yarn like three quarters through the shawl and um, the pattern is called let me look it up Larimar by Sue Berg and I had to dye another skein of yarn and after I dyed it I realized I had my notes had been bad and so I had dyed it in too bright of a yellow and I just really didn't know what to do I didn't want to I, I mean yellow is kind of like a, a color that I not that many people like so I didn't want to dye more yellow for the shop um, I mean of course the rest would go into the shop and so I really didn't know what to do and in the end what I decided because my the yarns that I had dyed were too dark I thought well whatever too strong of a yellow uh, too bright in comparison to the first section of the shawl so I decided well I'm just gonna do it I'm gonna knit with it and whatever and then I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do if I don't like it I'm gonna over dye it and that's in fact what I ended up doing let me show you what I'm talking about so this is the Lari Mar And as you can see, hold on. So I'm using the mic of my headphones. So what I'm I so as you can see, this is where I started with a lighter yellow. And I believe as far as I remember, I just had that final lace section started when I ran out of yarn. And I just I, um, of course you can't, I mean, maybe if it had ended here, I could have gotten away with a stronger yellow, but uh, not where it was, not where that change happened. So then I thought, whatever, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to over dye the finished skein. And I started bundling it up at this bottom edge. I prepared my dye bath a tall pot and I don't even remember it was kind of like a play color I, I believe it was quite a bit of pink and that's why I got this orangey um, result so I bundled it up at the edge I held it together and maybe I tied it also in the top on the top uh, section I mean kind of like this is the top and I slowly lowered it into my dye bath, but important is that the dye bath was already hot because that means the color can attach to the fibers much, much faster because what the fibers need is the citric acid and the heat. So I held it like that and I slowly lowered it and I'm talking slowly it was a pro process of maybe not that long not half an hour not half an hour slowly lowering maybe five minutes or so I mean it soaked it up quickly and then I um in the end the ho I put the whole shawl into the pot and let it sit there and um for I don't know how long 15 minutes but as you can see by the time this upper end was lowered into the dye bath there was a lot of the dye already absorbed and not a lot left so you can still get an idea of the original color because there are these bright yellowish speckles almost in the original color up here yeah Love how it turned out. Very happy with the design. Larimar by Sue Berg. I also finished my, my hat that you had seen in a previous episode. It was for my friends in Germany. And um, when I went to Germany in June, 
I took the hap and it was done by then and I had blocked it on my amazing hap stretcher didn't take a video this time if you are interested in how I do that there is a video um, about that from last year two years ago probably two years ago in in my videos um, check it out it's kind of like a really fun and short video about that and that's again what I did this time but I did take uh, pictures and I got it all pulled up so I want to show you how that looks like Oops, I'm taking a lot more to zoom in. Hmm. Hmm. I hope you can see that. And if you cannot, it's of course on Ravelry where I am, paper dag. I'd love for you to friend me if you haven't done that. I always love to. Um, I try to keep up with what my friends are up to on Ravelry always like to see that so and of course my friends loved the hat it's uh, for uh, as a baby it was a newborn baby gift and um, the big sister already had one that I made uh, two years ago and now this one of course had to also get one and I also made a baby sweater top down from my head i looked up the sizes of still even though i kind of thought i had planned it i this sweater got way too big so at some point i decided i'm not gonna try to hurry to send it with the hat for the newborn baby because it's going to be another at least two years before the baby's going to be able to wear this and I apologize, I have no, I have no, um, I didn't bring the yarn. It's yarn that I bought for another sweater, which you had seen before, but which I have frogged. And it's a silk and merino blend which is going to be fine for my friends. Hold on. Sneeze attack, sorry. It won't be a problem for my friends. They won't mind hand washing. They have a lot of wool sweaters and wool clothes. Yeah. So at some point I will attach buttons and I will send that off to Germany. I have also done a little bit of spinning. I am on the large amount of this white, beautiful white Rambouillet fiber that I had gotten from a local farm and which I, yeah, I have one bobbin already spun up and I think I'm going to spin the other one soon. Very pretty pretty and very soft, fine, squishy yarn. Not sure if I'm going to leave it white or what I'm going to do with it. I'm spinning without a purpose, just really fine. Then I had some gorgeous yarn kind of somewhere between sport weight and fingering. And I had three skeins of it and I wasn't sure what I'm going to do with it because I just really didn't, um, I, 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 I had nothing to combine it, combine it with that would have worked from my yarns. And this yarn is from a German dyer. I'm going to put the name on the screen for you. And I don't know if she ships to America though, but whatever. Um, but her, I love this and I we, I was traveling with my husband and I thought I need something special so I'm going to take this yarn and sorry it's kind of loud when um, cars sometimes um, I'm in my dye studio slash garage with the garage door open 
so I in the end made something where I used up almost all of the yarn that I had almost I have tiny balls left and I decided on a short cropped cardigan with longer sleeves I'm gonna put it on for you but I have not yet found the perfect buttons so it has no buttons yet it hits my natural waist and I probably used four millimeter needles and I made it up, sorry, like the baby sweater. I didn't even tell you, I think. And so I wanted the sleeves to go to here and I wanted the bottom ribbing to hit my natural waist, but I also wanted a large um, neck opening and I, noticed while I was working on it that my sleeves were kind of getting a little bit wider than I wanted to before I had achieved the width here. So a few times I only did my raglan increases towards the body and not towards the sleeves and it worked fine so now I'm happy with it even though I wouldn't mind if they were a little tighter but it's okay and now I just need to find the perfect buttons and take some better pictures than the one that are on Ravelry <laughs> Terrible. whatever but um, here look at this yarn isn't it gorgeous I just, I just love the shades of blue and gray and these occasional golden dots. Love knitting it up, love how it looks like. I did not alternate skeins. And then after I was done with this, I decided I shall knit with, sorry, <laughs> I shall knit with some yarns that I had combined in a package for a very long time. I was going through a drawer in the house actually um, where I had uh, yarns prepared for projects but hadn't worked with them yet either because I hadn't found the perfect project or pattern or because I I don't know there's always something new and shiny that was more important um, but this time I grabbed this uh, pack of yarns that was an show you the leftovers first these guys and I'm talking about sock hop by dancing leaf farm these two and there was a fourth a, a third of that base and that's the yarn where I told you many times that I knew that yarn from Maryland and I had always wanted to carry it in my own shop when I have my yarn dyeing business and so this is it and in I call it sugar loaf and um, this is the colorway Saturday with Mel and like I said I had a fourth color and you will see it when I show you the shawl so I decided on the Odyssey by Hoki Locatelli and it is a I think it's even a free pattern and I have not blocked this baby I'm terrible I just got it done and put it in a box and 
but you're gonna you maybe you say hey doc it looks so different in the then yours looks so different than in the pattern and I can show you this is how the original shawl looks like and it is knitted with DK yarn and for me I knew I was going to knit up the yarns. I didn't want to have major leftovers, so I just kept going and added, even in the first color, two of the lacy stripes. And the way I did this was, if one pattern repeat has, let's say, 15 stitches, or let's say for ease, sake of ease, 10 stitches. Um, making this up. Wouldn't remember, it's been too long. So I would knit a good bit further and I would think, oh yeah, maybe now is a good time. I would count my stitches again and make sure that I have a multiple of 10 plus the according um, I don't know how many, maybe nine stitches for the edge. So I would have to have a multiple of 10 added to the stitch count that I had when I started the pattern, the lace pattern here. It was really not brain surgery, easy to figure out. And then I really just kept going, actually later I kept going even further. You see I have relatively much left over from this and I proceeded in the same fashion. Actually I think I counted my, my rows or the garter ridges until I started the next lace repeat. And of course I made sure the stitch count was right because sometimes you mess up and I had to be right for this. Same down here. And here in fact I switched to the new color and this is the color that you, that I have nothing left of. Um, and when I switched to this it was just before that lace or maybe even in the middle of the lace segment at the beginning of it. Don't know, can't tell. At the beginning, I think. Yeah. And then I switched to the last one, which is a dear to my heart colorway because it's called Afternoon with Mel, which was created when my friend Melody visited from Southern New Mexico, actually southeastern New Mexico, and we had a little bit of fun dyeing. That's very much her color scheme, and of course I also had to set aside a skein for myself, but it was not a full skein that I put in here. I had already used something for something else. So yep, still needs to be blocked. I will get it done hopefully soon, <laughs> definitely on the schedule. Then, like I said, I had sorted through a lot of my you know, mind whips, maybe let's call them that, and I had um, I wanted to knit something fun. Hold on one second. So what happened then was that I was looking for a project, something beautiful and calming. And in fact, what happened was I started, I think, two different shawls. I had two shawls in mind and I could just not focus. I could not even though they were not hard ones, I could just not get them going. And so I was talking to a friend about that, a knitter friend, and she said, hey, I completely know where you're coming from and I'm similar 
right now I need something mindless and beautiful and that's why I'm knitting the birds of a feather shawl by Andrea Maori and I'm in fact gonna make another one because I've enjoyed the first one so very much so I thought hey that's a word <laughs> that's I'm gonna do the same thing so I in fact grabbed some yarn that I had meant to use for a cardigan and I decided I'm gonna use this not for the cardigan but for the birds of a feather and I have um, yarn there to combine with it and I'm gonna do just that I'm gonna use this yarn for the shawl and I will and I will use my yellow fuzzy yarn for to combine with I had purchased this in Maryland at a at a pop-up shop at the great yarn store in Frederick which I loved so much we went for the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival but then we went to this pop-up um, event which was just fabulous it just I got blown away by all the hand-dyed yarns I had the hardest time ever to decide what to choose and so okay so back to now so I wanted to use this for the birds of a feather and combine it with some yellow and you you're gonna say you're not using mohair duck you have told us million times that you are don't like mohair because it scratches you yes indeed I was gonna use Suri alpaca silk um, yarn but some that I carry in the shop it's called um, velvet the base but when I, I and I started knitting with this that's that's why this is a ball of yarn already I started knitting and the, the colors did not work together the yellow was kind of like a pastelish neon yellow and I'll put in some pictures for you and it just wouldn't go it was not this was the yellow in here is a lot more gold and and then I thought okay I'm gonna go back to the drawing board I'm not gonna stick with this I'm gonna over dye I mean I mean I'm not gonna stick with that yellow because it doesn't work so I'm gonna over dye that yellow and use that over dyed the yellow and then again didn't like it <laughs> it was too high contrast for me at that point in time I n I'm now looking at it and I'm thinking that would have been gorgeous what was I thinking but actually maybe subconsciously I was also thinking hey I have three skeins of this I should die up my own and it actually um, so I ended up dying and this I really think turned out great it's actually there's one skein that's in the shop at, right now and I called it matchmaker and now you know why <laughs> because it fits so perfectly to this guy. Such a warm and happy yellow. So I got that done and I could start my shawl and that's finally when I was happy. I, the shawl I had it in a liner magazine I copied it out of my magazine and but Andrea Maori asks you to use four millimeter needles I don't know I just like for fingering I like 
3.5 millimeter needles and that's what I use but I do have a lot of leftover yarn this is almost a full skein this one not quite I use a little bit less I mean I used a little bit more kind of in proportion but it's just yeah whatever it is what it is and but my shawl when I recorded the German episode I was not finished with my shawl but since then I finished it I actually did that last night and just this morning after breakfast I wove in all my ends and it just needs to be blocked and I adore this shawl and I thank my friend for recommending the pattern and I'm so glad I went through all the trouble to get the colors right for myself because this is definitely one that I will wear and I need to tell you that briefly I was even considering making this in all the colors of the rainbow and design and designing more color combinations but ah, life's too short to knit the same pattern over and over again and I already have some other ideas where I'm gonna have to tell you about my dilemma what I would like to knit next this one the other shawl to be blocked baby sweater blocking and buttons short cardigan crop cardigan buttons so a few things that still are missing on all of these but they will get done and now I need to tell you what I am thinking of doing next so I essentially have two options. I kind of, um, I'm glad I've been monogamous during the past months, but I think I might be ready to start a garment, a piece of garment and maybe another shawl at the same time. I haven't decided yet, but I definitely still, I'm still thinking about the cardigan that's definitely an option the cardigan that I had planned for this yarn and I need to tell you that I when I purchased the yarn you're gonna say yeah three skeins of course that wasn't going to be enough for a cardigan but also the pattern in itself um, when you look at it closely, you see that you need a different color for a section of the cardigan. And I'm just going to pull up the pattern. Hey, it was there, I promise. I don't know what happened. Hmm. Let me pull it up for you. See. It is called the Scapa cardigan. Am I recording? Yes, I am. This is really very much my style of cardigan, kind of like open, loosey-goosey. And it does take a skein. So two colors of yarn for the pattern section and the body and a fluffy yarn for that edge which probably, let me show you, that was probably the very last skein of mohair that I ever bought, bought in my entire life. <laughs> but it fitted so nicely and it felt soft and I love fluffy yarns. I'm probably gonna hold that with the leftover Zia Wolf's Velvet. I don't know what happened to this tag. That was actually a quite expensive yarn. I'm probably gonna hold these two together for that I cord or whatever it is, edging. And I 
dyed up the beekeeper's daughter for to combine with this, but it's actually, it turned out that it was very similar next to it. So I decided I'm gonna over dye it and I added a few colors and that's it. I think this is different enough. A lot more green yeah so this is so I have two of those of course so that's option one but I was telling you dilemmas <laughs> so because I also really want to knit with this this may look familiar. I've spun this from fibers, also from Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. And I, it was a little bit too boring for me because it was kind of um, be, all natural fibers, natural colored fibers, kind of beige and a little bit of brown. So I over dyed it in a bright green and I just really, I'm super happy with how it turned out. Great color and hand spun, gosh, you can't beat that. It's so pretty. So I am thinking about another cardigan like this with a giant collar. This was also my design and I love this. It's, I've often worn this kind of like really like on planes when I traveled, when I didn't want to bring a big heavy normal jacket. It's really a very, very nice one. So, it's going to be either the Scapa cardigan or a copy of this guy. Just starting top down. That was my design. Just straight until I'm done with the collar and then a short row neckline shaping in the front. Yes, this was my dilemma number one about the garment. Still haven't decided on that one yet. <laughs> and uh, the other issue is that I, like I said, I also want to make a shawl and I kind of like saw myself in a state of mind right now, very, yeah, grieving and, and kind of like how can I say, kind of like a restful and ground and in a state of almost like knitting as a way of meditating and reflecting and so I really thought maybe this is a good time to knit lace or even a, I had another lace shawl that I was thinking about making but then I thought about this one which I wanted to make a good while ago but I still haven't I frogged it back then but I really I want this shawl it's not I'm usually a, a project knitter more than I am a product knitter I can easily get let something go when I'm done with it but this one I really I want the finished product more than I want to to put in the work to be perfectly honest <laughs> so I pulled the pattern out and I looked at all the project pictures um, it's a Hoki Locatelli as you can see and I pulled out my my bin with lace yarns where I had two 
that I had planned on using for something for myself and one of them is a brighter turquoise the other one is a grayish lighter blue but then my eye fell on a pink yarn and I thought dang a pink this and a bright pink would be the bomb and so I dyed up some yarn this is my um, no not spirit my serene base which has about a thousand one hundred yards but the shawl requires about 1200 roughly so I am I think I would maybe go down a needle size because I don't want a fabric that's extremely open where I pull threads all the time you know when I use it and also I yeah I think it might be better um, but I did dye two skeins of it just in case and I'm gonna hold back the other skein it's it does have and I don't know oh yeah here's a spot where you can see it so it's this super bright neony pink but it also has darker pink speckles occasionally just to have a little bit more fun yep so that's one option which is very different from what the other ones I, I con con I'm contemplating and it all for the other options to it all started off with this beautiful souvenir yarn that I have purchased right around the corner from Debbie <laughs> in San Diego because we took our daughter back to San Diego she has since started college and oh man yeah I told you about that in the first part of the episode so I went to the yarn store, found this, and would have bought a dark green because I felt like this screams to be combined in one shawl with a dark green. So they didn't have anything. I thought, whatever, no problem. I'm going to dye up a skein or two, actually, which I did. I dyed up two skeins. And ba bam, I just love this one so much. Love the color. Yeah, I don't even know. It's just perfect. So I thought, okay, I have two of this. I have one of this. I'm going to find something great. I'm going to look and go diving into all of the patterns that I like. And I did that. And I found two options, as you may have guessed. But then I read and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's one shawl even it doesn't yet again it doesn't take two colors but three colors and i had not i couldn't really tell yeah you have to at first glance this shawl looks like two colors the light one and the darker one but the darker one in the stripes is lighter than the other darker one yeah and this is the lily pilly by amber o'brien amber o'brien yeah beautiful pattern and i have long wanted to make one of her patterns so i thought this was gonna this was gonna be the right time but then I looked again at the Tamdu by Melanie Berg and this is how this looks like and if you you don't live under a rock you may have heard or seen Melanie Berg's Instagram post she's going through some really rough times from what she has published there i'm not talking about any secrets she has to undergo cancer treatment 
And so my decision fell on this pattern because I'm thinking it's gonna be a really nice thing for her to know that people are thinking of her, people are uh, knitting her patterns, and I'm gonna be looking forward to sending a lot of good energy her way when she has to go through these um, tough times um, with her health. Um, she needs all the good energy and all the love and all the prayers that she can get. So, third color, yet again, for the time due. So I decided I will dye up something. And at first I thought, I'm gonna come up with a purplish burgundy like this one. But then I thought, hmm, I like my golden yellows, like here. So I have, Yet again, two options. <sighs> oh no, wrong one. It's a different one. This is just, this is not a colorway. It's just a custom to go with that. So I try my options. And I know they would all work together greatly, but I'm thinking the one that drops is -da, this one. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I'm going to go with. I just love gold these days, even though this is also a great one. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do with this color. Hey, I have just surpassed 5,000 followers on Instagram. I have no idea how this happened. I'm so excited. I've been at like 4,980 forever and ever and ever and just now it happened. And so this calls for a giant giveaway and I'm thinking this is going to be one of the giveaway skeins. So stay tuned if you are on Instagram. Again, my name is Paper Dag there. Um, I will posting something about the giveaway soon and I'm probably going to do several skeins. So it's going to be a big one. It's a big number that needs a big giveaway. Maybe five different prizes. That would be fun, right? Five prizes for 5,000 followers. That's a good idea. Yes. All right. So, and the other thing is, so I wanted to tell you about Instagram, that's important, but also in regards to my mother, it was important um, to me to, um, I know you, many of you know her and I've been, I'm thinking of her of course all the time and I miss her like crazy. We pretty much talked on the phone, on FaceTime, thank goodness many times um i mean every day not many times for time every day and um one of the things that hit me so hard was that um she had made many crochet blankets in a certain stitch stitch pattern and i thought wow she never taught me this so my quest was to find out how does that crochet pattern work and i actually figured it out quite um, pretty fast with the help of some friend knitting friends and crochet friends and what i'm talking about is this one she was a very frugal person so she worked at this place that produced um sweaters in the 70s and, um she did she worked for them at home and so she got a lot of these leftover yarns that they used kind of like um polyester like these thin yarns and she would just combine them all to, with all kinds of results and make garments for us and make these blankets and this is stitch pattern i think it's probably in english also called a waffle crochet And I have started a blanket with two 
threads of sock yarn, fingering sock yarn. And I'm using German sock yarn in just friendly colors, not no gray or black or anything like that. But this is how mine looks like, and this is how wide it is. Not not my wingspan, but not quite. But almost. It's gonna be fun doesn't need to be giant and so I'm just so glad that I figured out how she does did these and um, I have a lot of sock yarn leftovers from her and this lives in here and I decided that I want to host a a memory make along for Oma. <laughs> it's a M. I'm going to put the hashtag on here uh, for you. So I would like to invite you to join in with your own memories of a special person and to join in remembering this special person with a special project. It's a make along, so you can sew, you can knit, or you can crochet, or maybe you wanna bind a book, I don't know. Anything you'd, you, you, that comes to your mind. Uh, just this morning, I watched a podcast of a German a knitter who said hey I'm so touched by this I my grandma died 10 years ago and I so remember looking over her shoulder it makes me kind of like very emotional talking about it I remember looking over her shoulder and watching her hand stitch her quilts so she said I will start a quilt in her memory and I'm gonna try to hand stitch this quilt with this certain pattern and I thought what a what a nice what a nice idea and I'm gonna end the make along in January on my mother's birthday on January 14th when mom would turn 80 and but if you have started something maybe in a certain color that reminds you of somebody who you fondly remember or it doesn't even need to be that the person has already passed away please be creative if you have started it already fine if you don't finish by january 14th fine i am a, an easygoing very open person and i am so much looking forward to hearing and seeing what you can think of to remember a special person in your life and i just i think it's going to be a very nice thing for myself to continue on this blanket it will definitely not going to get done by then but i'm going to enjoy picking it up over and over again and um, knowing that this is something that my mother did so many times my brother has a blanket fiona has doll blankets i showed you this blanket and just this morning in our closet on the shelf i thought oh yeah there's another one of those yeah so memory belong for oma and now i have really come to the end wow that was a lot of talking and i thank you very much for watching and i hope you're gonna join the make along and if not it's fine too but i hope you're all doing well and um i wish you happy